Welcome, and thank you for joining for another whiskey review. Today, we're going to be taking a look at a very special bourbon, this 2020 release of King of Kentucky 14-year. Dustin, your bottle, my friend, not easy to get. You were able to, uh, was it win this bottle or spend enough at a store in Kentucky where they sold it to you? I, uh, I spent enough at the store to get the right to buy this bottle, so at retail, which was actually more than the MSRP is supposed to be, but whatever. What is the retail on these if you are so lucky to get it? So the retail is supposed to be on these two fifty. I know in Ohio that's what the lottery price is going to be. Uh, this one I paid two seventy, and I'm kind of I mean, it was a store that doesn't generally mark up. So my guess is you paid two fifty at the distillery. Everywhere else you're probably looking at a slight markup, and the distillery definitely got a disproportionate number of bottles this time around, which means things are even harder to get for anybody outside of Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah, no, I've seen these at auctions um, and other places where they go for an insane amount of money. Yep. I mean, these are $1,000 bottles, um, at least the last year's 15-year-olds and so far this year's 14-year-olds. Uh, so uh, if you're lucky enough to get one at retail, um, good for you. Very, very rare, very precious bottle. Now, again, these 2000, um, 2020 versions are 14 years old this time instead of 15 years old like they were last year. This is barrel 16, Rick 46, Warehouse K, location floor eight and the data was put into a barrel was june 27th of 2006. now dustin is there anywhere on here where we can tell like what release of 2020 this actually is again this is just barrel 16 so they put out 2000 bottles roughly i think just under that number total total total, total, total of all the barrels yeah and um this uh this year's release from what i was i've been reading and hearing about had a significant amount more very short fill bottles I mean, now we're yeah, looking at this. This is one of 75. 75 bottles. This is probably a big, this is actually a big barrel for a King of Kentucky's. I mean, they're putting out, I've heard of at least three barrels this time around that came in sub 10 bottles, Mike. Yeah, I heard a few of them last year were right around 20. Um, there was one even... last year that did come under 10. Let's try to keep that. One thing I've noticed is if you let this thing drip down on your whiskey, guys, you <laughs> are going to stain the heck out of this label. <laughs> on the bottom. Because the label just absorbs it. Okay, so yeah, again, bottle 48 of 75 on this particular one. 46.55% ABV, cast strength, non-chill filtered, natural color. 64. What did I say? You said 44. 64. 64, forgive me. 64.55%. 64.55. Big cast strength. And it is beauty. dark. Yeah, very, very dark, rich, dark caramel on this one. And Mike, in honor of Sean Connery, I'm going to drink this one shaken. <laughs> Not stirred. <laughs> Yes, what a sad day, this last day of October and Halloween it is. Probably viewing this video a couple days uh, later on in the week, early November, but uh, as we sit here on Halloween, we have a beautiful day, beautiful yep. whiskey. There are better ways to spend your time. I don't know what they are. Uh, there could be a beach outside or something, maybe. Yeah, true. Yeah, if you didn't have some cool days, you wouldn't appreciate it. All right, Thanks, Dustin, sir. what are you getting on the nose, my friend? First thing is this is just candied mm. vanilla and caramel. I mean... <sighs> intense sweetness man so much caramel sweetness on this one yeah i mean it's almost like those Werther's, like those candies that you'd like melted one down like that smelled that yeah and if uh you got the targaryen melt on the face i mean it's so aggressive it feels like your just whole face is in it it's just <laughs> bang as soon as you put your nose in the glass man oh man yeah it's like someone shoved you down in the candy mixer like you know when they're we're mixing the caramel yeah so then i kind of started mm. picking up a little mm. bit of brown sugar there's oak spice and unquestionably nice Tobacco, dried tobacco leaves. <clears throat> I'm right there with the tobacco, man. Mm. This is classic bourbon. Mm. Turned up to 11 on the sweetness. And, you know, I gotta say, Mike, sometimes some of these bourbons we drink are mm. on the heavier oak side. On the nose so far, it's there and the oak is big, but this is by far not an over oaked nose. Yeah, no, um, Neither was last year's 15-year-olds. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those are old ages for bourbons in general. Yep. Um, but especially the way they actually make this whiskey. Um, so basically, you know, they kind of, what do they do it? Um, like in kind of a heated warehouse to where they... So there's a heat sink. Heat sink. Okay. Yeah. Tell me more about that. So the whole idea of, you know, bourbon is that, you know, the heat expands the oak, cold contracts it. So it's kind of like, you know, squeezing a sponge. And so what they what they claimed on last year's release was that it had the effect of something along the lines of six more years of aging or six more seasons of aging. By basically turning up the heat in the warehouse, hotter and colder, hotter and colder. Yeah. 
Now, I know it gets pretty warm in Kentucky in general, especially mm -hmm. like in June and July, August yeah. time. Now, do they do, use the heat cycle in the summertime, or is there something they do in the winter to kind of trick the wood into thinking? I believe, and I'm not positive, but I believe those warehouses are fully temperature controlled. All the time? Yeah, so they're doing a cycle that's purely whatever they want it to be. Okay, so no outside influence as far as what this is doing outside. Now, don't get me wrong, they could be doing something along the lines of, let's take advantage of it being hotter out, so we'll you know, save power or something. I don't know the full details. But for the most part, it's spent all of its time being controlled very meticulously as far as what they want to get yep. done. So anyway, that's a, the reason for some of the richness of it, but it actually comes off even a little bit older. I tell you what though, I, I've said it before, and I, you know, as you know, I'm a huge fan of the 15 year olds. Man, these are just the richest, fullest bourbons I have ever tried in my life. No, if yep. this was a bourbon that was regularly available, my God, I don't know if I ever would have went to Scotch. It's that impressive of a whiskey. Uh, I mean, we're talking cast strength, single barrel, good age statements, mm -hmm. and uh, from one of the probably the most revered distilleries right now in Kentucky, the Brown Foreman Distillery, mm -hmm. who does your Old Forester. They're part of Woodford. Mm -hmm. you know, they're they're, they're putting out some of the the best bourbons. You know, I know Buffalo Trace gets all the hype, but Brown Foreman's doing a better job in 2020. Oh yeah, I do love the Old Forester 1910, 1920. Yeah. Both of those were excellent whiskeys. I mean, Birthday Bourbon's a great bottle if you can get a hold of that. Yeah, we just we saw a couple of those at a buddy's house here recently. <laughs> yeah, that was I was shocked when he pulled those things yeah, out. Wait a minute. Yeah, I got these too. Oh, well. Good job. Bearsman of riches. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, and then also, I mean, if you think you on the cheaper end, uh, Woodford Double Oaked, phenomenal bourbon for a very fair price. Mm -hmm. All right, so yeah, we're kind of going over some of the same things we're going to know. It, it's extremely rich. Um, just um, so sweet, so candied. You know, if you like the the caramel, the sugary. Um, nose to any bourbons man this is just the most extreme example of that i've ever had yeah what do you get on the palate all right so right away i just said hey guys this isn't over oaked it is incredibly drying on the palate that high abv along with obviously there is a lot of oak in this whiskey and i said it about last year's whiskey if you don't like oak king of kentucky is not for you mm -hmm. that isn't to say that it does that you know it's over oaked because it's not but you have to enjoy that effect of that spicy oak the drying i mean this is almost like this is so drying you'd almost think mm. they used french oak instead yeah. of regular american i was gonna say for someone who typically um just does scotch it has a very french oak very spicy very open porous type mm -hmm. of wood feel to it and then on the finish it reminds me of a good highland park it's almost immediately drying on the palate mm -hmm. then it kind of comes back and gets savory again yeah, I mean, there is, there's transitions. There's, I mean, first off, it just fills your mouth up to the point where you're just going, oh, holy God, let me stop. Give me a minute here, guys. I got to think about this. So much flavor. But then, I mean, you, can, you get the transitions to where the oak starts taking over. The tobacco mm -hmm. comes in. The sweetness starts off caramel. Then you get, like, French vanilla notes. And then you get vanilla beans. And then you get, I even get a little bit of nuttiness, like, like you get on maybe, like, a Heaven Hill product or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. I never really get that on the Brown Foreman profile. And I don't really get the bananas you get on the Brown Foreman's, but I think that's what the age has done, is taking that banana out. Yeah, I don't get, I mean, I typically think, when I think banana, I think younger whiskeys, so it would make mm -hmm. sense that this wouldn't have that note in there, and I, I'm not really picking up that note. One thing I am picking up more, though, with a couple drops of water was, I mean, a really candy vanilla note is coming out of this now. And that candy vanilla is kind of like intertwined with that oak note, which, again, yeah. is very aggressive. Yeah. And I like aggressive whiskeys in general, so this is really, you know, up my alley as far as a flavor profile that I would really enjoy. But man, the flavor on this thing is just like with the 15, it's probably not as quite as dense and as rich as the 15, but a close second. Yeah, I think uh, just in general, I'm getting like more hard candy with water. Just hard candy noses, I just. Very just sharp sweet, sweetness, sharp, just sharp sweetness. Yeah, yeah. Like it just has, you know, it's very rounded. It's just like, hey, it's almost like, it's almost like a, a bit of a, um, a candied lemon to this as well. So there's something citrus in there. Not quite orange, I wouldn't say, but something slightly acidic, maybe? There's definitely an acidity to it, especially up front when it first hits the tongue, it's very acidic. Mm -hmm. well, so going into trying it again now with water, and this is why the 2020 does not live up to the 2015 for me. I get more bitterness, I get more oak, I start picking up some of the stuff I get on those old Knob Creeks or old Heaven Hills, like say the 18 year, where the oak has kind of taken things the wrong direction. It's not a bad thing, I like it, I'm still enjoying it, but when we're talking about 
Last year, King Kentucky, which may very well have been the best bourbon ever produced. One of my, my favorite bourbon ever. <clears throat> yeah, and that one in the Mictors 20 years that I've had her, hands down, you know, way up there. Is this better than a Pappy Van Winkle? Yes, of course. Absolutely. Not even close, not even in the same stratosphere. Is it better than any Head and Hill specialty bottling or say um, George T. Stagg? You know, there's been a couple batches of George C. Stag that I think could contend with this bottling, not with last year's, but mm -hmm. they're still, uh, they're going to struggle. They're yeah. going to struggle. Oh, yeah. This is really the apex of bourbon to me. Again, I agree, not as good as last year's 2015, but still a very close second. It's, um, that wood note kind of reminds me of some single barrel uh, Cavalans that we've gotten here recently. Um, if you enjoy very oak driven, tan and rich yeah. wood in your whiskey, you'll love this thing. You'll yeah. love it. You know, and that's not to say there's, there aren't other complexities. There isn't sweetness. There's plenty of sweetness. There's plenty of uh, caramel. There's I'm vanilla. I'm getting a bit of sugar. buttery biscuit now here on the on that uh, oak now, which I don't. Yeah, that's not. That's an unusual comment for a bourbon, but just mm -hmm. a little bit of buttery sweetness on the palate, just kind of there right before the end. Um, there's something toasted about the oak note where yeah. there might be some type of uh, butter covering, let's say, <clears> a dusting. Yeah. I mean, what I'd really love to know because I know this is basically the same mash bill as Evan Williams, mm -hmm. which. I believe no, not at Evan Williams. Um, early times, which they've just sold to Buffalo Trace. So we'll see what's going to happen to these bottles down the road. But what's really interesting would be to kind of compare this side by side with that bottle of Bond to see if those buttery notes and those oak notes are coming through, or maybe did they use better oak casks? And it's not just age, it's not just warehouse, but they just they found better oak. Yeah, wood policy, you can't uh, underestimate it. Yeah, that's a huge thing, which doesn't get talked about enough in bourbon. All right, Dustin, so um, another King Kentucky or bourbon. Now, I don't know how to give a score any other way than just an overall whiskey score. I yep. hate saying, you know, for a bourbon, it's this, because I really don't have a really, very, very good perspective. But I will tell you this. Um, this meets every criteria for me for a 91 out of 100. I definitely pay two, $300 for this bottle. It's cast strength, unshill filtered, uncolored, which all bourbons are, but still I like to say it. It's just an epic whiskey experience, man. Yeah. 91 out of 100, all day. 92, I could go up to 500 on this one, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, as far as price, I thought you went whiskey score. I was like, <laughs> I was like well, man, we're getting out there. Uh, no. 90, 92 out of 100, I could see that $500. Last year's, I think, is a $700 bottle all day. Mm -hmm. I don't know what's wrong with people who are spending over 1000 Guys, there's better scotch. There's better scotch. If you want to spend $1,000 on whiskey, we can give you, give you some opinions. Yeah. But I understand that if you, bourbon's your thing, last year's 15, man, it was just the apex of bourbon to me. And yeah. I've had a few. Yeah. So have you. I know. I brought over five different barrels of that one, so. Yeah, there, it's dynamite whiskey. If you guys are lucky enough to get your hands on, I can't recommend it highly enough. I always talk to uh, all my uh, friends who are, love scotch and want to dabble into a really high-end bourbon. This is the one I always recommend, much to Dustin's chagrin. What do yeah. you tell me? Stop talking? Yeah, I, we really should stop mentioning this exists. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't do that. i got to tell you guys what we're Let me tell you, here. it got a lot harder to get these than last year. Last year, I got four of these without a lot of effort. This year, it was a lot of effort for two, and I'm not counting on seeing more. Is what it is. Times we live in. Yep. Embarrassment of riches. All right, I'm at 91 out of uh, 100. Dustin, you're at a 92. We want to once again thank you for joining for the Whiskey Review. And until next time, we wish the folks happy drinking. See you then.